Hello, I'm Dale Yurton, and welcome to our study on our riches in Christ. We're looking at what God has provided for us in the church, the body of Christ. The study, of course, comes from the book of Ephesians, and uh, what a rich study. There's actually 10 lessons in this series. You need to listen to every one. This is lesson number five. Where we're talking about being standing with Christ. First of all, the first position, there's three of them that's listed in Ephesians. We first learn to be seated with Christ. Then we learn how to walk with Christ. And I actually divided that into two parts because there's so much information that Paul gave on that. And this is the third position. The third position is stand with Christ. Stand with Christ. And being seated with Christ, that's our relationship with God, with Christ. In walking with Christ, that's our relationship with each other. When we talk about standing with Christ, that's the way we relate to the devil, to the kingdom of darkness. Learn to stand with the whole armor of God. And so that's our position. In spiritual warfare, it's the position of standing. Now, it's very important to get that straight in your thinking, just like we learn how to walk in Christ from our position of being seated with Christ. The same is true here concerning standing. The way we stand will be determined from the way we are seated with Christ. And so if you cannot understand that Jesus is Lord of it all. He's master. He's king. It's the kingdom of God. That's the only kingdom that will endure. If you don't understand that, then you're never going to be able to stand with Christ the way that you should. See, to, to put it in simple terms, we cannot win a battle that is already won. Jesus has already defeated the devil. Now, he wants to deceive us on that and make us think we've got to fight and win the victory, but the truth is, it is finished. Jesus is Lord. He is seated at the right hand of God, and there's nothing the devil can do that will change that. So our position in spiritual warfare, our position as soldiers of the Lord is we are enforcing the victory which Christ has already won. I, I need to repeat that because you've got to get that straight in your thinking. We can only enforce the victory which Christ has already won. Now, what the devil tries to do, he tries to deceive us and get us involved in this spiritual fight with him. But if we do not fight from a position of victory, we are already defeated. And the devil knows that. So he's always trying to trick us into this. And we think that we've got to win the battle. No, Jesus has already won the battle. We're simply enforcing the victory that he has won for us. So let, let me divide this lesson into three main parts. The first part is learn to stand in Christ's victory. That's what I was just talking about a moment ago. When Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished. That's exactly what he meant. Paul, oh, excuse me, when Peter was talking about this in the book of Acts, and he talks about there is only one name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved, the name Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He has conquered. He is the king. He's the winner. So we've got to learn to stand in the victory that he's won. Stand and enforce that. Let me read for you from Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I'm going to begin reading with verse 10, reading through verse 14. Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. And he goes on and he lists the final two weapons that we'll discuss in our next point. These are all defensive weapons. Now, the first thing I want to point out from this passage of scripture is, we are not fighting with people. We're in battle with the kingdom of darkness. It's the devil that is our enemy. It's the world system that is our enemy, it's our own carnal nature that's our spiritual enemy. It's not our brother, not our sister. So stop getting involved in fights with your brothers and sisters. It's a big mistake. We're not fighting people, we're fighting with principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age against wicked spirits in the heavenly places. Now Paul describes this standing position of warfare as wrestling, wrestling. Now you may not know a lot about the athletic form of contest which we call wrestling, but it's a contest of trying to throw your opponent off balance and trying to pin you to the mat. If, if your opponent can pin you to the mat where you're not able to get up, regain your, your position, then he has won the match. He's defeated you and he's the champion. And Paul uses this wrestling to illustrate our position of fighting spiritual warfare, standing with Christ. What the devil wants to do, he he wants to throw us off balance with what he's called his, his wiles, or the Amplified Version calls it his strategies and his deceits. The devil's always trying to trick us. And how much time we have wasted fighting something that was already won. All we needed to do was enforce Christ's victory. So the devil tries to throw us off balance. He tries to trick us or to trip us up and make us fall. Don't allow him to do that. Now, how, how, can we, how can we keep our position of standing with Christ? Well, understand, we cannot win in the flesh what must be won in the spirit. This is spiritual warfare. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Boy, some of us need to hear that on a regular basis because we're always getting drawn into some carnal contest. Don't do that. There's no one that's going to win out of that except the devil. That's all. This is a spirit battle. We're wrestling. We are fighting against wicked spirits in the heavenly places. And so we've got to learn how to stand with Christ. He already has won the victory for us. Our position is simply to defend his victory and say, Jesus has already defeated you. Jesus is Lord. If we can get that straight in our thinking, it's going to eliminate many of the strategies of the devil, that he's always trying to trick us into getting us involved in another fight. No, Jesus is Lord. Jesus has already won the fight. Now let me give you the second point. The second point in this standing with Christ is stand with Christ defensively. I notice, and it's why I broke off on the reading of this passage of scripture, all of the original Pieces of armor that Paul lists are all defensive warfare. 
They are defensive weapons given to protect us, not offensive. We'll talk about that next. You must learn to stand with Christ defensively. Let me read again there in Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now notice, all of these different pieces of warfare, the helmet, the breastplate, everything that he's given us is to protect us. This is what we would call defensive warfare because we're defending what Christ has won. That's our first position, is to defend his victory. You didn't win that battle. Jesus won that battle. You are not Lord. You're not in control of my life. I only have one Lord. His name is Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So when I learn to stand in the victory that Christ has won, I'm defending his victory. That's what we have to learn how to do. And so he, he lists these different pieces of armor that's been given to us. The first one that he lists is truth, truth. And he, he called it a belt. Truth is the belt that holds our armor together. It keeps everything in the right position. It keeps it connected together. It's truth. Uh, the devil always comes with lies, with deceits, deceptions. He comes with his strategies to try to trick us. What sets us free from that? Truth. Truth. Jesus said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. He never has lied to you. He never will. The devil, he cannot tell the truth. Everything, he can't even quote scripture properly. When he quotes scripture, he even misquotes it because the devil can't tell the truth. Truth sets you free. And truth liberates you and puts all of your weapons, all of your armor in its proper place in your life. The second thing he talks about is having the breastplate of righteousness. And what he's saying there is our heart must be right. There, there, there is no substitute from having a right heart with God. That only comes by repentance. It only comes by asking for forgiveness. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However... The righteousness of Christ is made available to us. So we put on the breastplate of his righteousness. Then he talks about walking with feet that are clothed with the gospel of peace. That comes back to the way that we walk, doesn't it? We're learning to walk in unity, learning to walk together. God help us to learn that. Be ready to walk in peace with each other. Then he, he brings up the, the um, fiery darts that are given, uh, that the devil shoots at us. Now you have to understand that most of the shields that were made in that day were made of wood clothed or covered with leather. And so it's why they would shoot fiery darts is if they could ever set your shield on fire, they could destroy it, make it ineffective. But faith is greater than all the fiery darts of the devil. The devil cannot overcome us because we have the shield of faith. Then he mentions a helmet. The helmet that he's given, that, that, that covers, of course, not just our head, but our brain. It covers our thoughts. Our thoughts are covered by his salvation. I'm talking to some of you right now that this is where you're allowing the devil to trick you. 
He plants a thought in your mind and then tries to make you think it was your thought. It wasn't your thought. It didn't even originate with you. Many thoughts are thoughts that the devil throws at us. It's as the old cliche, you can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. That is so true. Reject it. The way we do it is with his salvation. Our minds, our head is covered with the helmet of salvation. Someone has noted that there is no weapon or no armor that covers our back because God never intended for us to turn and run. He never turned or intended for us to be defeated. That's true, but I think also it points out something else. We should never fight alone in spiritual warfare. One of the greatest gifts that God has given to us is family and friends. Someone that will cover your back. Someone that will protect you when you can't protect yourself. All it takes many times is just one voice to speak up and it stops all of the screams of the wicked one. So never fight alone. And if you don't, you don't have to worry about your back because they will keep your back covered. I would encourage you that particularly as you begin your spiritual journey and you are attempting to grow up into Christ, I would encourage you to spend time before you begin your day, every day, of getting dressed spiritually. Take the time each day to get spiritually dressed in the armor of God. Now, after a period of time, this will start to come to you naturally. And you learn to put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Make sure you have got your shield and your sword. Make sure your shoes, the gospel of peace is on your feet. Get dressed spiritually, just as we do in the natural with putting on clothing. Do it in the spirit and get dressed because we do have an enemy and he will attack us, but use the armor of God for your protection. Now, the third thing that I want to discuss with you concerning standing with Christ is we need to learn how to stand offensively. Now, we're talking about offensive warfare where we're going to actually attack the strategies of the devil, that we're not just waiting for the devil to attack us, no, we're invading his territory. We're moving into places where he is controlled sometimes for thousands of years. We're taking the good news of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a slave of the devil. The devil is a defeated foe. The devil has been conquered by Jesus Christ and he is Lord of all. Learn how to stand offensively. I remind you, Paul never mentions offensive weapons until he has us fully equipped defensively. Now that's very important. Because if you don't have on the defensive armor, that's exactly where the devil will attack you. If you don't have on the helmet of salvation, he's going to attack your thought life. If, if, you, if your heart's not right, and he's going to attack you with guilt. He's going to look for any area where you do not have defensive armor covering and clothing you. But after he has us fully clothed and prepared, then he starts talking about offensive weapons. Let me read it to you, Ephesians 6, 17 through 19. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me. 
this utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, after Paul has us fully clothed with the defensive armor God has provided for us, he lists two different offensive weapons. One is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The second one is praying in the Spirit. Now, these basically are weapons we use to attack the enemy. It's not the devil attacking you now. You're advancing on the territory where the devil is trying to establish his strongholds. But I caution you again, it's only when we put on the whole armor of God that we're ready to attack. Don't go into battle not fully armed with the weapons that God has given to us. Now, the way that God has given this to us, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God gave us His Word to feed our spirit and to attack the enemy. That's very important. It's why we need to study the Word of God. We need to meditate on the Word of God. We need to pray the Word of God. Allow the Spirit of God to take and apply that. Not that you can fill your mind with it. You can memorize it. But pray over it until it becomes a part of your spirit being. And you are believing with your heart. That's when you're going to begin to see faith in action and God's going to begin to work miracles through your life. So God gives us his word, two reasons primarily, feed our spirit and to attack the enemy. He calls the word of God the sword of the spirit. In other words, this is a spiritual fight. Now there's so many people that they, the, the Bible is only a, a book to them. For many of them, that's all it is. It's not even the Word of God. But there's others that will tell you they believe the Bible is the Word of God, but they leave the Word in the book. That's a mistake. Get the Word in your mind and then in your spirit. When you get it in your mind and your spirit, now you're ready to use the Word against the enemy. Remember where Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. It's not just something that we hear with our ears. It's something that sinks down into our spirit. And in our spirit, we come alive. And we're now using that to attack the enemy. Oh, it's powerful. It's a powerful weapon that God has given to us. Jesus, in dealing with the devil, he was tempted by the devil after 40 days of fasting. And you read this story in Matthew, the fourth chapter. In verse four, Jesus answers the devil and he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The devil is tempting him. If you're really the son of God, take these stones and turn them into bread. Could Jesus have done that? Of course he could have done that. But just because he could do it is no reason he should do it. So he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, I find this amazing that Jesus is quoting the Bible. He's quoting the scripture. What is so amazing about this is Jesus is the word of God. So anything he said would be scripture. And yet Jesus is quoting from the Bible. He's setting an example for us, of course, but he's also showing us how spiritual warfare works. You take the word of God, it becomes a part of you. It gets in your heart, your spirit, and then it gets in your mouth. You are now speaking from your heart. And from the heart, one believes unto salvation. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
And so Paul says, this is the way that we're supposed to operate. He not only talks about the word of God, though, then he begins to talk about prayer, prayer. And he asks that the Ephesians will pray that God will give him bold revelation. Oh, that, that, that's beautiful. That God will give to him this spirit of revelation. He tells them to pray in the spirit. Now notice this, praying in the Holy Spirit. That is spiritual warfare. I spend a lot of time praying in the spirit. I need that. I need the revelation. I need God to help me because I'm doing warfare, invading the devil's territory that he has set up his surrogate uh, kingdom. He, he's a squatter on God's property. He has no right to be there. And I'm attacking with prayer. So prayer, he says, is a spiritual weapon. In fact, I believe Prayer is one of the believer's most powerful weapons. It's the way that Jesus dealt with the devil, used the word of God, he used prayer. As he prayed in the garden, that's where the real victory was won for Calvary. He won the victory on his knees in the garden. God help us to follow his example. Now, I, I want to caution you here because I, I've come to realize that Many of the attacks on our life, behind that is demonic forces. Demonic forces, that, that, that's what's behind it all. And they, they tend to try to get our attention on natural things, on people and what people are doing. Don't be distracted, my friend. Behind it all is the kingdom of darkness. Behind it all is the devil. And he's making an attack upon your life. What are you to do? fight back. How do we fight back? With the word of God and with prayer. When we learn how to do this effectively, we're going to be standing in triumph. We're going to be standing with Jesus. He is Lord of all. In John 16 and 33, Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you that you may have peace in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And that's the word that I leave with you today, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn to stand in that victory. Learn to stand fully armored with all the pieces of warfare that God has given to us, but be sure and take your shield of faith and your sword of the spirit and God will give you victory over every demonic attack upon your life.